Ah, I can't whistle. No, I know, I've tried putting my lips like that. I would go on record saying that that arrow from Guardians of the Galaxy is one of the coolest weapons we've seen in the movies for some time. I'd put it right up there with lightsabers and phasers. It's creative, it's unique, and it's powerful. But just how powerful is it? This special arrow belongs to Yondu, a blue alien of the Centurion race. The arrows themselves are called Yaka arrows, projectiles that are able to change their course in response to sonic stimulation from the user. We see it do some legitimately awesome stuff in Guardians 1 and 2, so how would it fare in a less fictional universe? Basically everything with an edge that is meant to cut into something else, like a scissors or an unexpected katana or Yondu's arrow, uses pressure to do so. And pressure is just a consequence of some force acting over some area. Even if the force isn't that large, if you drastically reduce the area, you can make the pressure piercing. The ability of a material to resist pressure without being cut is called a material's ultimate tensile strength. When a blade comes down on a material, there is some tensile or stretching force as pressure is applied to the bonds in between the atoms and molecules. If there is enough pressure, this overcomes the ultimate tensile strength of these bonds and the material is cut. So I think I'm getting it. Oh, heads up! So what ultimate tensile strengths do we need to consider? In Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, we see Yondo's arrow go through steel, humanoid skin, and even stone. We have the data on these materials. If their ultimate tensile strengths are less than the pressure that the arrow can feasibly produce, then there's a good chance that the arrow would go through. Now what kind of pressure are we talking about, y'all? The force behind a Yaka arrow would be really hard to estimate without some comparison, and thankfully, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 gives us one. Now, spoiler alert, I'm gonna be mentioning a very fun scene in Guardians of the Galaxy number two, so if you don't wanna know anything about the movie before seeing it, jump to this time code. Okay, I warned you. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we see Yondu slow his freefall using his own arrow, kind of like Mary Poppins does with her umbrella. It's a really, really fun scene, but more importantly for us, it confirms that Yondu's arrow is putting out at least as much thrust as is needed to cancel out his weight. Okay, 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 no, no, no. Now we can draw a Yondu force diagram or a Yon diagram. Hashtag Yon diagram. The actor Michael Rooker has a mass of about 80 kilograms or 180 pounds. If you multiply this times the acceleration due to gravity, which I'm gonna assume is Earth-like gravity, even though they were inside Eagle the Living Planet because it looked like they were flying and falling and jumping as if they were under Earth's gravity. If you multiply those two values together, you get a good force estimate for how much the arrow needs to put out in thrust, and that is around 800 newtons. If we use 800 newtons as our force estimate, all we need is the area of the arrow tip to get the pressure, which is, Come on! Maybe it's, maybe it's one square millimeter. And if that's the case, it produces 800 million pascals of pressure, or 800 megapascals. This is like putting 50,000 kilograms on a postage stamp size piece of your, ah, no! Yondu got my pal! Now that we have our effective arrow pressure, we can see what that bad boy goes through. Woo! The ultimate tensile strengths for steel, skin, and stone are known quantities, so, based on our thrust estimation, could Yondu's arrow make it through these materials? Let's see. Just do it! Using our thrust from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Yondu's arrow should be able to pierce, if not go all the way through these materials based on their earthly ultimate tensile strengths. 
But is there a penetration ooh problem? Well, not necessarily. Unlike a traditional arrow that expends all of its energy during flight and then subsequently impact, it appears that the Yaka arrow has a nearly unlimited supply of thrust. And even though 800 newtons isn't that much, it's enough to move a full-grown man's mass around pretty quickly. So if it can do that, when it impacts an object, it should be able to continuously apply pressure and penetration wouldn't be as much of a problem. But the arrow wouldn't be able to get through everything. 800 megapascals is a lot of pressure, but humans have gotten very, very good at making high ultimate tensile strength materials. Yandu's arrow, using our estimations, wouldn't make it through the strongest steel, nor would it make it through a significant amount of Kevlar, and it wouldn't come close to making it through the very futuristic and super sciencey sounding graphene. So, how strong is Yandu's arrow? Well, based on our estimations from the films, it would certainly produce enough pressure to make it through many different kinds of materials, but maybe not the especially strong ones. Still, I'm gonna give the Yaka arrow the benefit of the doubt here because not only does it look like the tip is superheated, it looks like the only body armor that is worn in the Guardians of the Galaxy universe is leather. And nothing's cooler than leather. Except maybe Mary Poppins, y'all because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes like this one and on Instagram and Facebook where I'm now posting mini episodes of this show like I did today. Thanks for watching. I already said that. It's kind of cool that Yandu's arrow is sonically controlled, but that does give it an effective distance limit. Uh, because the arrow moves around faster than reaction time, or that's what it looks like, that's what makes it so effective, then there's some distance at which it takes longer for the sound waves to travel to the arrow to tell it to move than the human reaction time has. So that's about 250 milliseconds or a quarter of a second. So if if sound moves at 340 meters per second, then the effective distance at which you could still move the arrow around very, very quickly without anyone being able to react to it is around 100 meters or so, which is a football field. It's pretty good. And it doesn't, and that fits, that, that fits with everything we see it do in the films. Ha <laughs> Nice work, Gunny. Can I call you Gunny? <laughs>